To understand protein synthesis, let's take a look at what happens when proteins are not made correctly. Let's take a look at inherited diseases. One example is cystic fibrosis. Individuals afflicted with cystic fibrosis will have mucus buildup in their lungs. They will have respiratory problems and the mucus itself is a breeding ground for bacteria. This disease is incurable. Therapy is about all we can offer. A lifespan used to be about 8 years old and now with medication it's up to 30 years old. One in every 2,500 individuals are afflicted with cystic fibrosis. This disease once again is inherited. So what did their parents give them to cause this condition? As it turns out, cystic fibrosis is caused by a protein in the cell membrane that doesn't work. And why doesn't this protein work? Because the information for making the protein is wrong. And this information was inherited from the parents. Information is the DNA. Let's see how all this works. So DNA is the information. This then gets turned into a message. We'll call this mRNA. That then gets turned into the product, which is in fact a protein. So it's information to message to product, DNA to mRNA to protein. Relate that big idea to this animation. Let's watch it again and I'll walk you through it. We're going to start here in the nucleus where the information is located, that's the DNA. We turn that into a message. That is the mRNA. That goes to the cytoplasm where it meets up with other molecules. We'll describe these other molecules in detail later on. But in essence, what they're going to do is take the message and turn it into the product. They're going to take mRNA and turn it into a protein. So it's hooking together individual amino acids and we're making the polymer known as the protein. That's our final product. Let's look at it again and add more detail. The first step is known as transcription. The second step is known as translation. We start with transcription, taking the information and making a message. We start in the nucleus. The DNA must first be unzipped to expose the bases. An enzyme will help do this, RNA polymerase. Once it's unzipped, then bases of mRNA can come in and base pair with the DNA. We call these complementary bases. A with T, G with C. Well, actually, there is no T in RNA. There's only uracil. So we'll explain this in class. But we, what we end up with then is a message of the information. This is the messenger RNA. Many things will happen to the mRNA, which we won't go into detail this year, but you get more of this next year. This messenger RNA then will leave the nucleus through a protein channel going out to the cytoplasm. So the information stays in the nucleus and the message leaves to go make the protein. Here's what we've effectively done. We've taken the DNA sequence and turned that into an RNA sequence. TAC gets turned into AUG. Step two is translation from message to product. As we enter the cell, the first thing we'll see is the nucleus. Coming out of the nucleus then, we have these ribosomes, which we'll discuss in a minute, and more importantly, we have the messenger RNA. Here's the message that was just made through transcription. The message will then connect with two pieces of ribosome and allows then a transfer RNA, which is a molecule with three bases of its own with an amino acid attached to the other end. An enzyme helps this happen. This tRNA then is going to base pair with the messenger RNA. 
So we have a codon on the mRNA, which attaches to what we call the anti-codon of tRNA. Two tRNAs are allowed to attach at any time in the ribosome. Once these two tRNAs are attached close together, the amino acids then form a bond between each other. These are known as peptide bonds. Only the correct amino acid can come in because that is coded for in the messenger RNA. The termination or stop codon does not allow the process to continue and the protein can do whatever it's supposed to do. So now we've taken our message and turned that into the product. As it turns out, three bases of messenger RNA codes for one single amino acid. So this information you get from your parents, this, this code, this code of life, is really a code for making proteins. And that's it. That's pretty simple.